So you can see on this side, uh, the deers are actually <laughs> eating everything. So that's why. So after we noticed that, we fenced it up. But we, it looks like that we also have to uh, maybe repair or replace this retaining wall. Uh, maybe because of the tree roots or because of erosion. But we put, we're probably gonna have to maintain this wall as well. Um, and this is a better shot to get uh, just a sense of the problem with the uh, uh, erosion. That's how do I phrase this? If you look on that side of the neighbor's land, then you'll see that there's a ton of uh, a ton of tree branches. And what that does is, during the uh, winter, especially uh, after after the snow melts, there's going to be a lot more flooding in the river. And because of those tree branches, it protects that side from getting eroded. So all the water comes over here, and it erodes this side even more. Uh, hopefully, that's understandable. And we don't want that, so hopefully we're going to figure out a solution. Maybe we're going to put the bamboo here, but I think for now, we're just going to maintain this wall. We're here at the end of the river for a better view. And actually, this is uh, called Colt River. I think it starts all the way in Ansonia, and it starts really big, and it gets all the way small at the end. So here, we can actually get a better view of why we're having such a bad flooding problem. The first reason why is you can see on the other side, uh, all the neighbor's trees and branches are poorly maintained, and they're actually causing all the water to sort of clog up and stop. And the reason for that is because the property on the other side here isn't owned, it's actually rented. And renters don't have an obligation or responsibility to maintain this uh, property, this riverside property. So it kind of gets worse, and it gets worse on our end especially. So, second reason is right there, those two little tunnels. So, I think because of that uh, uh, residential apartment on the other side, they want to stop. Uh, they want to sort of limit the amount of water that goes through. So that's why they have the those two waterways. But because it's such a tiny uh, tunnel, when that when the flooding happens, it definitely doesn't help. So in order to solve that problem, the city added this. This is a um, a drainage system, and what happens is that when that overflows, the water is diverted into here. And this drainage system leads all the way to the sea. And I don't know what I'm pointing at, but the sea. So that brings me, that brings me to the reason why we're flooding. So right here is a catch basin. And you can see that down here there's a ton of garbage and leaves and mud that's all piled up. And that's blocking some of the water from going into the uh, into the uh, drainage system. And it's because people are throwing their tra their trash into the uh, river, and it's starting to clog up. So, because the catch basin is getting clogged, uh, clog it's stopping the water from getting into the drainage system. That's just making the uh, the flooding worse. All right. So, this problem is made even worse by the fact that the city is actually supposed to come in and uh, maintain this. Uh, catch basin, my dad calls it, and they're actually supposed to clean it up. But you can see that um, it's the middle of July and it looks pretty terrible. And my dad has actually called them in the past to uh, come do it, and they've only, uh, according to him, they've only done it once. So he's actually come out here himself, uh, and with, uh, actually not himself, but with Uncle Lon, and they're dressed up in like I'm not sure what they're called, uh, but what you wear for fishing, I think they're called uh, overalls. Um, but he actually comes up and he he removes all this blockage. And the water actually comes up to um, all the way where... Actually, it's supposed to come up to a grate. But what happens is that there's actually uh, no grate. And it's supposed to be on top of here. But um, okay. Um, we don't know where they're wet, where that went. Uh, but my, I think my dad seems to think that our neighbor stole it. Now the reason why he seems to think that, uh, bear with me here, is because our neighbor has already stolen our metal fence, and I'm not sure what he did with that. Maybe salvage or sell it. But um, our metal fence is gone. So the fact that this metal grate is gone and it's sort of on our neighbor's side of the property. Um, it, it might be a bit far-fetched of an idea, but um, anything's possible. And I don't think you could really much 
pretty much really, really, really do anything about it. I mean, we could call the cops on him, but... So we're here closer to the uh, drainage system for a better look at it. And you can see where all the water is supposed to drain into. And it might be a tough uh, perspective, but that... I don't want to call it a pipe, but that tunnel down there is probably 8 feet in, diam in diameter. Hold on. I'm a bit worried about the safety of that iPhone, but what happens is that, is that all this water, this entire river, when it starts flooding, especially in the spring, it's supposed to overflow on all three sides and into that drainage tunnel. And you can see all around here, like right here and over there, it's just completely clogged by wood and mud and trash. Uh, and there's actually supposed to be a um, grate right here. You see that this is where it's supposed to be supported on, but it's missing. And you're supposed to be able to walk on that grate and be safe on it, uh, but I guess it's gone. All right, so now we're here uh, closer to our neighbor's side, and you can actually get a way better view of the cat station. Now, I'm not gonna go all the way over the edge, because that's uh, dangerous. But, okay, um, okay. Anyway, now that we're here on this side, I, I can talk about the grate itself. So, you can see behind me, this is sort of our neighbor's property, and there's a sort of a junkyard behind there, and he used to keep rabbits and all kinds of stuff here. It was pretty cool. I asked my dad about uh, what might the ramifications be if we walked onto this side of the river, you know, because it's closer to the neighbor's side. And he told me about easement and right of way, which is basically, that technically we own half of the half of the river uh, because it's uh, near our property, but the city has uh, imminent domain, which basically means that if they need it, they can take back that right and own it for themselves. And that's sort of eased my mind about uh, what I thought was trespassing, but I think we're okay. So a good analogy that my dad told me is that this is sort of like uh, walking on someone else's sidewalk. Even though it's in front of their house and technically they're supposed to maintain it, it's still imminent, in it, imminent domain to the city. And he, this kind of veers off track, but apparently some sidewalk, some cities have it 25 feet uh, off the center of the lane and some have 50 feet off the side of the center of the lane. That's imminent domain to the city. So basically it's the same for this river. We can walk over here without permission because it's uh, imminent domain to the city and we don't need permission to walk here. All right, so we're right behind the catch basin, and this is the thing where trespassing actually becomes a real thing. So I could probably take a step right here, but I, could, I probably shouldn't step all the way onto that. But you can see here that my my neighbor has a ton of junk in here, and we're not stepping onto the property or anything. But you can see that right there that there's a rabbit or chicken den, and I know that my my the, my neighbor actually used to have chickens and rabbits, and they were uh, really smelly, but. So this is going to be a bit speculative, but the, the cops used to come in a lot uh, on my neighbor, and I, used, I, also used, I also know that they used to have chickens and rabbits, and now they don't. So using uh, a little bit of reasoning, I, I'm, I'm starting to think that maybe the cops uh, tried to convince the owners to uh, take away their rabbits and chickens, and that's why they're not here anymore. That, that's what I can tell. Alright, so now we're just a bit far away from the catch basin. Well, we're still on imminent domain, so right now it's not trespassing. But you can see, you can see our neighbor's um, backside from the from here. You can see just a ton of things. Now, uh, first off, you can see the rabbit and den area, the rabbit and chicken den area on that side. Second off, you can see that right here is our. This is actually our property line. This fence right here is actually supposed to extend all the way down. But what my dad did was he wanted to build another fence, which you can see on here, and. He didn't want to trouble himself with uh, taking down all the fence that ran down that way, so he just built it uh, upon it. All right, so let me just uh, clarify: this metal fence is our property line, and that wooden fence is the fence that my dad wanted to build. And he didn't want to take down the metal fence because it was too much work, so he just built it right in front of it. That built the wooden fence right in front of the metal fence, and then my neighbor moved in. Uh, for a while, everything was going good, but then my dad noticed that the metal fence was gone. So he confronted my neighbor about it, and then the neighbor said that he uh, took down the fence, and it's actually where we're standing upon. He put it down here, this actually used to be lower, and he piled dirt upon it. 
So I guess uh, that's where a fence went. You see right here, this is actually the uh, city's fence. And it runs down all the way down there. So you can see that right here, the neighbor actually, maybe the neighbor, he, he actually cut it. And um, I don't think you're supposed to do that. But uh, anyway, you see down here that uh, that seems to be a bucket uh, that's a mosquito nest. Maybe breeding mosquito larvae. I That does not look uh, sightly at all. But it's uh, just a, a ton of problems and my mom's not too happy about it. Uh, but the neighbor, the neighbor's like 70 and uh, my dad doesn't want to cause too much trouble for him. So for now, what are you going to do with it? But maybe in the future, we're probably going to take this deck down and reclaim our land by building another fence. All right, so we're here on our property. We're closer to the road and you can see right here is where another place where my neighbor kept his rabbits and chickens and they were really smelly. So it got bad when we had functions and parties on our side. So my dad confronted my neighbor about it. And um, maybe that's part of the reason that the neighbor got rid of the rabbits and chickens, but now um, it's not smelly anymore. <laughs> um, let's see. So my dad has a lot of problems with the neighbor, as you can probably tell, but my, you know, my neighbor's 70 years old and my dad really just wants to live a peaceful life. He doesn't want to cause a lot of confrontation. So I guess really all he does is he picks and chooses battles. Now we're on our side of the property, so definitely no trespassing here, but you can see through a hole in our fence, uh, some of our neighbor's stuff. And you can probably tell from this that he's uh, eh, sort of a pack rat. Um, and a lot of stuff down here, you can tell especially, is encroaching onto our property. So this is the reason that my dad wants to take down this wooden fence and construct a metal, uh, no, not metal, a concrete wall in the place of it, just to just make sure that my neighbor doesn't yeah, really. That's my cat. Just to make sure that my neighbor doesn't <laughs> encroach on our property. <laughs> and so that our cats can't escape to it, maybe. Alright, so talking about that concrete wall, we're actually going to show you in the next part how, maybe not how to, but how I lay down the mortar for the retaining wall and show you our bamboo riverside uh, aesthetic, I guess. And I'll see you then. So stay tuned. I'm Layman. That's Irelia. And signing out. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Peace.